the fifth estate. I'm Adrian Clarkson. Tonight we report on a secret CIA research project carried out in Montreal in which mental patients felt they were used as the CIA's guinea pigs. They kept you asleep for 23 days and while I was asleep they were shocking the heck out of me with electric shocks. The CIA was interested in, in Dr. Cameron's work on psychic driving because it could give them an idea of where the personality could break or be stressed. The, those of us who were involved with trying to find out something about brainwashing, yes, this is, uh, the, this is the reason that we were interested in Dr. Cameron's work. The American Central Intelligence Agency has been accused of manipulating citizens of countries all over the world, including Canada. At the moment, a number of Canadians are considering suing the CIA. They believe they are victims of covered CIA experiments. Tonight, two Canadians who feel the past 20 years of their lives were damaged by the CIA tell their stories publicly for the first time. They believe they were part of a CIA project called MK Ultra, a research project so secret that even the Canadian government was not informed that the agency was funding activities in this country. The CIA was seeking a new weapon, aimed not at the body, but at the mind. Americans became obsessed with brainwashing during the Korean War. Prisoners of war returned home denouncing the American way of life. Hearing them parroting propaganda, the CIA became convinced the communists had found the key to brainwashing. Now the Americans had to unlock the mystery of mind control. Uh, there was great worry that the Soviets had developed uh, rather esoteric and unusual methods of uh, uh, so-called brainwashing people. Uh, the purge trials... Dr. John Gittinger was the CIA's chief psychologist for 25 years. There was continued pressure put upon anybody within uh, the agency in connection with trying to explain or understand uh, brainwashing. So we were charged with rather an elaborate attempt to try to find out chemical, psychological, any kind of means <clears throat> that people could use to influence the behavior of the people. Nothing seemed too bizarre. To find out if sex could be used in spying, the agency studied San Francisco prostitutes and their clients. Using unwitting human beings as their guinea pigs, the agency tried everything. Drugs, hypnosis, electroshock. Under code names like MK Ultra, the CIA spent 25 years and $25 million on secret mind control research. Brainwashing could be a powerful ideological weapon, and the U.S. had to have it. And when the agency didn't undertake its own studies, it funded someone else's. Thus, the search for mind control brought MK Ultra to Canada, to Montreal. Even in the Cold War years of the late 50s and early 60s, most doctors and academics would have been embarrassed to have found that an organization of spies was openly paying for their research. So the CIA set up a number of fronts, respectable foundations like the Human Ecology Fund. Sounds innocent enough but it was run by the CIA's brainwashing experts. Here at McGill University in Montreal, the fund found three projects worth financing. They supported an extensive study of witch doctors in Nigeria. How, investigators wondered, did native healers cure mental illness? What mysterious drugs and potions did they use? ...used to bind up excited patients. A sleeping potion is then administered. Twenty years ago, the Human Ecology Fund paid for this movie. This soothes the patient's head. But it was only recently that the man who made the film found out that he had been working with the CIA's money. The author of the Nigerian study is still at McGill University. News of his connection to the CIA came as quite a surprise to Dr. Raymond Prince. I, I couldn't imagine why the CIA would be interested in my work in... Uh, uh, looking at uh, indigenous healers in West Africa, that seemed uh, r really strange. That was my first reaction, you know, and I, I couldn't believe that, uh, I couldn't understand how the CIA would be interested in that. Uh, because there were all kinds of, uh, of uh, 
beliefs that African witch doctors could put the hex on people. But anybody who makes a systematic study of what are the psychological f factors that can produce anything from having a person run amok in uh, uh, Indonesia or uh, uh, die of the sickness from a witch doctor in uh, Africa would certainly add to all of the knowledge that we were being able to accumulate about behavioral science techniques. The Human Ecology Fund also helped set up the Transcultural Psychiatric Research Review. Edited at McGill, the journal continues to publish without CIA support. The largest MK Ultra research project, this one directly related to brainwashing, was carried out at the university's psychiatric hospital, the Allen Memorial Institute. Located atop Mount Royal in a mansion with the eerie name of Ravenscrag, the Allen Memorial was once the most prestigious mental hospital in Canada. The unorthodox treatments of its director caught the attention of the CIA in the mid-50s. Dr. Ewan Cameron, the first director of the Allen Memorial, ran the institute with an iron hand for 20 years. But Dr. Cameron remained an American citizen and left the Allen abruptly in 1964. He returned to the United States, where he died in 1967. An energetic, enigmatic man, Cameron was an internationally honored and respected psychiatrist, but he was not universally liked. Former colleague, Dr. Elliot Emanuel. He was uh, an authoritarian, ruthless, power-hungry, nervous, tense, angry man. Not very nice. Much of Cameron's research went on in the stables next to the main hospital building. Here he had his subjects photographed before and after treatment. Dr. Cameron may not have known that the $60,000 research grant he received from the Human Ecology Fund really came from the CIA. Rudolf Hess. Nonetheless, it now seems ironic to some that Cameron was called to the Nuremberg trials to examine Rudolf Hess. For it was at Nuremberg, after Nazi doctors who experimented on prisoners of war were condemned, that a code of scientific ethics was adopted. Research must be completely safe, and research subjects must give full, voluntary consent. Documents recently released by the CIA reveal what research Cameron proposed. To make patients receptive to repetitive messages, Cameron suggested using chemical agents to break down ongoing patterns of behavior. Chemical agents like LSD. LSD was almost unknown in the late 50s and not yet widely tested. Despite the horrible hallucinations small doses can produce, Dr. Cameron left some of his patients to unsupervised LSD trips. In 1956, Bob Logie was 18 years old when his severe leg pains were diagnosed as psychosomatic and he was sent to the Allen Memorial Institute. When Bob heard the news reports of CIA-funded research at the Allen, he sent for his medical records. They revealed several doses of LSD. Today, Bob Logie lives and works in Vancouver, but he's still angry. I feel like I've been completely used. I feel like my mind has been completely invaded. I suppose uh, if guinea pigs have feelings, they'd feel like I do. LSD trips were terrifying to patients who had never heard of LSD and who had no way of knowing why their world was suddenly upside down. Hallucinations last for hours. Experts say this is what an acid trip would look like if it could be filmed. LSD was uh, really horrifying, very horrifying, and uh, they gave it to me for about 12 or 15 times. One minute I would see the doctor there, the next minute I wouldn't see him there, and uh, they were asking me all kinds of questions, and uh, I remember them telling me that I was getting smaller and smaller, and I really felt myself getting smaller. And uh, they were bringing me back in time, way back, uh, you know, at one point, I almost felt like I was just about to be uh, born, <laughs> really, that far back in memory. And uh, they were really, really probing, uh, asking all kinds of questions. And 
I felt I didn't have any control. Or I had to answer. I didn't feel I had any control. I was completely, uh, like they had complete control over me. Bob's leg pains were eventually treated with cortisone, but the effects of the LSD stayed with him, and soon he was back in the hospital. I just uh, felt I couldn't uh, cope, I couldn't adjust after the LSD, and uh, I was having a hard time. I uh, couldn't hold down a job for very long. I was going from you know one place to another, and uh, the anxiety really built up. I just, I just couldn't cope, and I went back. The interest in this sort of chemical, this kind of magic, this shortcut weapon prompted the CIA's interest in hallucinogens, particularly LSD? Yeah, very definitely, because uh, the, uh, um, the, the, the first pressure was being based on the idea that there was some kind of truth serum or truth drug or something on that. So the people who knew that end of the business, they were definitely beginning to look in terms of chemotherapy. And of course, to people in this day and age, it's very hard to believe that the, the period before 1960 was a period which was certainly not a chemical culture in this country and not a drug culture in any sense of the word. With some patients, Dr. Cameron tried a drastic treatment called depatterning, massive doses of electroshock, 20 times more intense than the standard shock treatments used today were administered to patients who were kept sleeping for days. Dr. Cameron thought he could wipe out patients' sick behavior and leave the healthy personality intact. But first patients were to be so depatterned that some even forgot their toilet training. Not all the patients ever completely regained their memories. Dr. Peter Roper was a close colleague of Dr. Cameron's at the Allen. Many people, but some would reach what Cameron would uh, call the third stage of depatterning. Uh, that, uh, with that method, others would need uh, two treatments a day, maybe for a week or longer, before what, they got to the third what stage. What would characterize the third stage of depatterning? Well, the third stage, as defined by Cameron, was a, a loss of. Um, uh, ability to uh, uh, orientate themselves. They, they knew who they were, but they didn't know where they were, and they didn't know what age they were. As you probably know, uh, electroshock treatment has been given for depression for something like 40 years now. It's a very successful and uh, useful treatment for severe depression that doesn't respond to other things. But depatterning is a use of electroshock treatment in a totally different way, in which instead of giving the shocks, say, two or three times a week, uh, they're given two or three times a day for three or four weeks, reducing the patient to a sort of animal, vegetable state from which it's hoped that they would recover in a, uh, a more healthy state of mind. It didn't work. To put patients to sleep for up to a month at a time, Dr. Cameron used a combination of depatterning and large doses of drugs. Individual taped messages were repeated to sleeping patients 15 hours a day in an effort to brainwash them back to health. Now, Cameron reasoned, with their negative memories obliterated, positive suggestions could be implanted. Suggestions like, begin to assert yourself, express your anger. Dr. Cameron called his technique psychic driving. Bob Logie had driving therapy when he returned to the Allen in 1959. I was there for a while and I thought, I, I don't want to stay here. And I, and I started to run away from the uh, hospital and they grabbed me and then they put me on sleep treatment. And that, they kept you asleep for 23 days and while I was asleep they were shocking the heck out of me with electric shocks and playing tapes uh, just over and over. I don't know what was on the tapes yet but we're going to find out what was on the tapes through uh, hypnosis. The CIA was interested in, in Dr. Cameron's work on psychic driving because it could give them an idea of where the personality could break or be stressed? The, those of us who were involved with trying to find out something about brainwashing, yes, 
this is, uh, that, well, this is the reason that we were interested in Dr. Cameron's work. Patients came to the Allen Memorial Institute from all across Canada. Dr. Ewan Cameron, it was said, would give them the best psychiatric care money could buy. But some of the patients had no idea that a lot of their treatment, the LSD, the massive doses of electric shock, the sleep therapy, was highly experimental. When I was in the hospital in 59, my husband, that's when he told me he thought they were killing me because he said that it was every day and there's a special treatment which he doesn't know. There was, I think there was some sleep, I was always asleep, he was, used to call the hospital. I couldn't have any visitors for three weeks, you see. Hilda Bernston was at the Allen Memorial in 1959 as Dr. Cameron's patient. She's convinced that the sleep treatment she received was depatterning. Her memory remains severely damaged. Mrs. Bernston was an English war bride. She and her Canadian husband went to Montreal in 1945 to raise their family. After a nervous breakdown, she was hospitalized at the Allen. It's three weeks that was out of my life as far as I'm concerned because I can't remember anything about it. I didn't know my husband and my children, my brother-in-law and his wife. And at, my sister-in-law at that time, when she saw me, she cried. My brother-in-law told me this when she saw me. She's a registered nurse too, and she said she'd never seen such a change in a person in three weeks. But I, I looked really dreadful. I, I still can't remember my aunt being with us. I look at the pictures that we took when she was here. We took her to the New York and we went, we were at the museum there. Uh, I look at the pictures and I still can't remember her being with us. And she was with me for three months. And, and this aunt was my mother's sister who was very de near and dear to me. Dr. Emanuel thinks Cameron's use of extensive electroshock depatterning was somewhat unethical. The quantity, the frequency, the intensity, and the uh, sort of animal state that, to which it reduced the patients. What you're really saying is that the doctor knows that by doing it that much to somebody, there's going to be an effect? Is that Indeed. And, and with little promise of, of cure. Hope, but as it turned out, uh, it wasn't a, and it didn't become an accepted psychiatric treatment. So many patients were left with some amnesia after depatterning that the Allens stopped the treatment when Ewan Cameron left. Under the new director, Cameron's disciples would come to regret their enthusiastic use of depatterning. Dr. Peter Roper left the Allen Memorial in 1967. What were the circumstances of your leaving the Allen? Somewhat questionable. In what way? Um, the annual reappointment was not renewed in uh, 67. Did Dr. Cameron have anything to do with this or was it after he left? Oh, that was after he left. That was, he left in 64. Did you have any disagreement about treatments given there? I didn't disagree with anybody. I think there was a, um, the depatterning treatment was stopped, I think, in 65. So anybody that continued to, to do it after Cameron left didn't do it after 1965. So you didn't do it after 65? Oh, no. no. Uh, I certainly know that a, 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 an intelligent, ethical scientist today would not do an awful lot of things that an ethical scientist would do in those days. How do you now feel about the use of involuntary subjects for CIA experiments or CIA-funded agency experiments? I certainly think that it would be ridiculous in this day and age. I, oh no, I don't see any way that uh, you, you would do that. There was no informed consent. I, I would guess that, uh, as I've just said, informed consent, as we now know it, was not a part of research at that time. And especially as regards the use of LSD, perhaps, or the depatterning, uh, I doubt if 
those patients really led, know what they were being knew what they were being led into. Informed consent doesn't mean much to people who are mentally ill. Not many people are so mentally disturbed that they can't uh, understand uh, that they're being given an experimental drug or they're being, being given electroshock three times a day. People can understand that. It can be explained in simple words. It had a great effect on my life. I mean, I have been sick before and uh, I've had treatment to but uh, there were never any experience I had was like that I had in 59. I've never been able to sleep without medication since the sleep treatment. I went through years and years and years of severe depressions. I dream about it. I, uh, all, my, all my waking hours I think about it. It's, uh, I, it's eating me up. It really is. I mean, if he was doing it and knew that what he was doing for the benefit of the CIA, then I don't agree with this at all. I mean, why pick on me or anybody else? I don't like that. It leaves me completely uh, stunned. I don't know if I'll ever recover from it.